Hi everyone! So today I'm going to make a special dish. As I already told you, my husband is leaving for Ecuador and guess what? Today is the day. So as usual, I called him up and I said, Honey, what would you like to eat? Because you never know when he's going to be able to eat um, before he goes on the plane. <clears throat> so he told me he wanted to have some fish. So I decided to make a special dish. And I'm going to go step by step because it's not so much the fact that it's tedious, but it is a little time consuming. So we just got to take it step by step. All right, so I'm just going to start cutting up my stuff right now because it's going to, I don't want it to burn. So I'm not going to turn on my, my pans yet. <clears throat> so what I got is I got a small bunch of scallions. I got um, a nice thing of garlic which I will probably end up using a lot of this because this is supposed to be a very good dish. So I just want to cut the ends off here and cut the ends off here. <clears throat> now, a tr I, I tell you a few tricks here and there of what I do with, um, you know, helping to cook. Um, as you know, underneath the cutting board, I have a wet paper towel so the cutting board can help stay in place. But what I also do is I usually take one of these bags that you get at the supermarket for your vegetables, your produce, or a plastic shopping bag, and I just stick it right in my sink so that I don't have to run back and forth to my garbage can. Um, I just put, you know, the little, <clears throat> excuse me, I can just put the little, you know, scraps of, you know, rubber bands or, you know, the ends of food or whatever in there. So I'm just going to chop this up all the way to the end and it helps to leave the rubber bands on as long as you can that way it helps to stay in place and you don't lose um, you know track of everything that you're cutting here so I'm going to cut the whole thing up Just get this little cut. if you want to chop it as fine you know more finer than that you know it's it's totally your call <clears throat> You have to excuse me. I'm fighting allergies on and off. Hay, hay, um, ragweed, hay fever. Ragweed is rampant right now, so you just gotta, you know, take it easy. I'm on uh, my allergy meds, but okay. So I'm gonna take the garlic, and it is a pain, so I just put a little slit in there, just like that, and it helps get the cloves out. So, like I said, I'm going to be using a ton of garlic, and then I'll also be using some garlic powder, so. If you don't like garlic, or if you don't like a lot of it, obviously you can cut it down, but it is good for you. It does come out of your pores, but at the same time, it is good for you, so you do want to use some, at least some garlic. Okay, so, again, the garlic trick when you want to chop garlic. Now, I do have a garlic mincer, but I don't want it to minced up. You just take your garlic, you leave the skin on, <clears throat> take your knife, make sure the dull side is against you, lay it flat against the garlic and just pound. That'll help loosen up the skin and then you know flatten out the garlic a little bit. So again, against the garlic, dull edge against you, and just pound it down. going little buddy okay and again that'll just make it easier to peel the skin off that one didn't get pounded too good there we go okay so got the last of my peel off the garlic I'm just gonna give my hands a quick run through because I got <sighs> fingers got sticky garlic is sticky <laughs> So, if you want to do a quick uh, shortcut with garlic, um, if you have a canned uh, chopped garlic at home, by all means, go ahead and use that. And once in a while, when I'm doing a lot of cooking, um, I'll do that too, but I always say the fresher, the better. <clears throat> so, I prefer to cut the garlic. Now, what you want to do is you don't want to mince it. You want to have a nice chop to it, but you don't want it to be like almost a pasty form. So, chop it up really fine, but make sure you have chunk. Make sure you have some small chunks in there because you want you want to be able to have some of that flavor in there. 
And you also want to keep an eye out for any um, shells that are still in there. Sometimes you will miss a little bit of a shell. <clears throat> it's funny, my nephews call me Shell. Ethan especially, it's always Shell. Hi, Shell. Shell, come to my house, Shell. It's so cute. He's adorable. He, he's the one that just turned five. Um, Dylan's going to be four. Uh, next month, and Colton, it will be two months uh, this week. Uh, actually, Monday, he'll be two months, so they're growing. I talked to my mom the other day. Colton's already smiling and getting really to uh, know his surroundings, which is good, so I'm happy. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn my pan on. Maybe about a tablespoon and a half, table, tablespoon and a half. Seems good. Because I'm also going to put in um, a little cut of butter. Maybe just the very end of the butter, maybe about uh, maybe about half a tablespoon of butter. I'm cutting like this because I'm actually going to use the whole thing of butter. Um, we're going to be doing some breadcrumbs along with this, so so I'm going to let this heat up. I'm going to let the butter melt. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want everything to burn, I'm just going to turn down the heat a little bit. And then I'm just going to add my scallions first so they can work first in the oil and butter. A few little pieces of garlic in there is not so bad. But I want to work with my scallions, scallions first and then I'll work on my garlic and then the little salad shrimp and I'll explain that in a second. Okay, so work those in for a minute, and then what you want to do, I have, as you can see, I have another pan here, is I'm actually going to get started on my breadcrumbs. So I'm going to put half of the stick of what I have left over so far in there. Now you could do two, you, you could do the breadcrumbs two ways. Right now I'm going to work with the canned breadcrumbs that you get in your, um, well depending on what, how your store has it laid out. A lot of them have the breadcrumbs in a can in the uh, bread aisle. Some of them have it in the baking aisle. I don't know, I don't remember I got mine. I think it's in the, um, in the pasta, the Italian pasta aisle. So I'm going to let that melt out. And I got my can of breadcrumbs here. I'm going to give my scallions a little stir. Now, if you like big, lumpy breadcrumbs, get a pack of bread, um, whether it's white bread or if you want to get some, um, if you have some leftover rolls from the day before, um, and then grind them, you know, use your, um, your grater and grate them up. By all means, that's just as well. But because I'm a little short on time today, this is how I'm doing mine. I'm just going to do them right out of the can. So I just added my garlic. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> I love the smell of garlic cooking in butter and oil. Um, whether it's with scallions or butter or onions rather or anything of that kind. Oh my god. I just love the smell. So now that the butter is almost halfway melted, I'm just going to start adding my breadcrumbs a little bit at a time. I have plain breadcrumbs here. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up separating some of these breadcrumbs. Uh, some of it's actually going to go in the center mixture and some of it's also going to be used as a topping on the fish. 
So what you want to do is you want to try to get all the breadcrumbs buttered. You want the breadcrumbs to be almost like a, a wet sand um, uh, uh, texture. <clears throat> so just try to work this. I have my heat on high. So even if your butter gets covered, just try to find a space where the butter can melt a little bit. But you want to continue to try to get that stirred in because you want, like I said, you want the wet sand texture to your breadcrumbs. I think I have about, probably eyeball two to three cups of, of uh, breadcrumbs in here. Right? If you need more butter, obviously add more butter, but just keep it close because you don't want to burn your breadcrumbs. Alright, so what I'm going to do right now while the, all that's working is I got a bag here of, they call it salad shrimp. Just like that. It's, it comes in a little bag. It's like, um, at Stop and Shop, it was a buck twenty-nine for this bag. <coughs> this quick stir. Now, you also have two choices with the shrimp. You can leave it whole, which I'm going to do. Or if you're making a lot of this, you can actually cut these up and you'll get a little bit more bang for your buck. But I'm going to leave them whole. And when I got them, they were frozen. So actually, what I did is I put them in a bowl of warm water. So my, some of my bread comes out a little darker, but that's okay. They're not burnt. As long as they're not burnt, you're good. But like I said, you want to try to keep them at a wet sand um, texture. So they look pretty good right now. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let them sit. This should be enough. If not, you can always go back and make more. It only takes a couple of minutes. And trust me, your food is not going anywhere. Okay, so let me just finish putting in the rest of my shrimp. What I decided to do is I decided to um, leave those as is. I cooking up the, well I'm not cooking up the shrimp because they're already cooked, but I'm just warming through the shrimp right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some breadcrumbs right into here because those got a little darker than I like and they have to be baked in the oven still so I don't want them to be completely burned on the outside and the inside. So I'm just going to add some breadcrumbs, maybe about a cup and a half. going to act like a binder. But if you make stuffing for Christmas or Thanksgiving, uh, what you would normally do is you would use, if I don't know how most families do it, but in our family we use um, just regular torn up bread. We tear up bread the night before. We let it sit overnight with uh, in a bowl with foil and then we use it the next day in our stuffing. I think I have a stuffing tutorial a few Quite a few videos back, so if you want to find out how that works, if it's if it's up there, if it's still up there, if I ever put it up, uh, go ahead and look for that. Uh, but the breadcrumbs will actually act like a binder and keep everything together on the fish. I'm just going to add a little bit more. So as you can see, I don't well actually I don't know if you can see, but uh, it soaked up all the oil and butter quite quickly. So this is going to be pretty good. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to add, uh, if I can grab it. You can't tell right now, but my kitchen is complete mess. Michael's leaving. I'm so happy. Well, I'm, I'm not happy he's going, but at the same time, I'm kind of happy to get rid of him for a while so I can actually clean out the entire apartment. I can't wait to do that, but I can't wait for my hubby to come back. It's going to be nice for him to come back home. All right, so salt, pepper. I'm going to turn off the heat and just let it cool down a little bit. So some garlic powder. And I'm also just going to add a little bit of adobo. Mix that in. Okay, 
So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes and just cool down a little bit because we are actually going to be handling it both with a spoon and our hands. So I just wanted to you know, cool off a little bit so that I can actually work with it. Okay, so that's off, that's off. I'm going to start Michael's rice. Michael's got to have rice with everything, right? Well, Daddy's got to have rice with everything. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to start setting up our little tilapia filled tilapias so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually turn on my stove to 350 so it warms up and <coughs> i can find my foil there it is i always find it's better to put on um foil with this fish and then just spray the bottom of it if you have um if you have a different technique that you like to use when you're doing your fish, uh, whether it's a broiling pan, you know, or uh, if you want to put it in a, a, a pan that's oven safe, by all means, that's your, and that works for you, by all means, go ahead and use it. But this just works so much easier for me. Okay, so I'm lining my baking sheet here. And what I'm actually okay. going to do is just lightly spray it with butter flavored spray so that the fish doesn't end up sticking while it's cooking. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your filet. You want to take the thickest part of the filet, which happens to be, well, this is one, one piece. Oh, bummer. All right, so I'm going to have to cut this guy. Let me just put this aside for a minute. I didn't realize this was one piece. It looked like two pieces in the store. Ugh. Okay, so let's cut this guy right down the middle. Okay, so you want to take the thickest piece. And you want to lay that on the bottom. Put this back over here. Okay, so you want to lay the thickest piece on the bottom. And what you're going to do very carefully, like I said, this should be cooled off a little bit more. Right now, it's been, it's been a few minutes. Is you want to just carefully spoon the stuffing right on top of the tilapia filet. If something falls out, that's fine because you have plenty to work with. So you just want to, like I said, just carefully spoon it up. And then you're going to do the same thing with your with your other filet. I'm making two servings here because it's, you know, obviously it's me and Michael. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be funny. This is two fillets I can actually cut into fours. Isn't that something? My goodness. Well, you know what? I think Michael's cousin's downstairs, so I'll make one for him, too. So let me just cut this up real quick. So, now that we're back in some kind of order here. Again, you just want to carefully, and try to get as much on the actual fillet itself, carefully put this on your fillet. Now that's it's actually a lot cooler than I thought it was, so it's good. I can work with it a little bit now. I'm just going to finish it with my hands because, it's, like I said, it's a lot cooler than I originally thought, which is good. Okay, guys, I really do apologize. That was Michael on the phone, so I had to take his call real quick. And in the meantime, my flip camera died. So, 
you have to see what I'm doing from here. I hope you can see this and not me, and hopefully you'll understand what I'm doing. Okay, so what I did, just a quick recap, I put foil over my baking sheet, I sprayed it with a little bit of uh, cooking spray, the butter flavor, I put down the thickest part of the filet on the sheet, and then I topped it with the stuffing that we made with the breadcrumbs, the shrimp, the scallions, the garlic, and a little bit of salt, pepper, garlic powder, and adobo seasoning. You, you can omit any of those um, spices if you prefer not to have them. That's all good and well. So now this is where we are. I moved my breadcrumbs over here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take the top piece of the fillets. And looks like we're going to have a little mismatch here, which is fine. <laughs> Why should anything else go right today? So we're just going to, what are you going to do is you're just going to lay the fillets on top just like that. Basically, it's a sandwich. It's basically, instead of bread, you're using the tilapia flakes as the bread itself. You're going to make a little stuffing sandwich. <coughs> Excuse me. So lay that one here, because that looks like it'll match up. And we'll lay this one here, because this will look like it'll match up. Okay, so now that you've done that, what I'm going to do, or you could do it one of two ways. I'm going to spray it with the butter spray, or you can melt a little bit of butter and just put it on top of that. I just got breadcrumbs in my fingernails, not was it? Again, what you want to do, and it's cool so I can work with my hands, is you want to just sprinkle the breadcrumbs right on top. And you want to try to get as much as you can on the actual fish itself. Like I said, if some of it falls onto the sides, don't worry about it. But you want to try to coat the top as much as you can with the breadcrumbs. Rice is working. He just called um, and said he'll be home in about 20 minutes, so that actually would be perfect. We should he should be getting home just about the same time that this gets done. Okay, so just like that. If you want to try to pick up some of the breadcrumbs that fall on the sides and just try to um, put it on top then go ahead and do that. That's what I'm doing right now. Does every square inch of the fish have to be covered? Obviously not. Would it help? Of course, because it'll just make it more flavorful. <laughs> okay, so that's all done there. Put that off to the side. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in the oven. I have the oven preheated at 350. And I'm going to let it sit in there for about 15, 20 minutes. You want, you want the fish, because the fish isn't cooked, you want the fish to be completely cooked through. Um, another quick tip, if you're kind of in a hurry, while you're doing your filling and your breadcrumbs, if you have a third pan, if you have space on your stove, if you have a bigger stove, mine's small, but if you have a bigger stove, um, a quick tip is you can cook the fish in some garlic and butter. Um, not completely through, but at least get the, you know, the top and the bottom done. And then when you stick it in the oven, all you have to do is stick it in for maybe 10, 15 minutes so that the middle can cook and everything can just like kind of blend together. So I'm going to put this in now. Woo, hot oven. Woo! And like I said, 15 to 20 minutes. And you want to check on it about halfway through to make sure everything's getting nice and cooked. Obviously, you can't flip it. So you just want to make sure that the bottom and the top are getting cooked at the same rate. So when we get back, you will see the finished product and you'll see uh, how it all came out. Okay, so I'll see you guys in a few okay, minutes. Guys, it's been a while because we had a little bit of a problem here at the house, but just to show you, oh, look how good that looks. It's nice and cooked. So it is a lot darker than I wanted it to be, but that's quite all right. <clears throat> so 
what I'm going to do, especially since I only have a few minutes left on my camera, is I'm going to quickly fluff up the rice. Okay. So I'm going to fluff up that, I just fluffed up the rice. Take a nice scoop because Michael likes his rice. Nice big scoop. Okay, that wasn't so big. <laughs> One more. This man eats rice like by the pound full, I swear. I'm not even joking. Okay, so I gotta get my spatula. Good enough. It's falling apart. Ah, not good. It's already falling apart. Oh my goodness. And that is it. So I hope you guys <laughs> at least give this a shot. Um, again, it looks like, it almost looks like fried chicken if you look at it from this angle. It almost looks like fried chicken, but it's really good. So give it a try. Let me know how you do with it. How, let me know how you feel about it. And if you did any tweaks to it, if you changed it up, changed the fish or the filling or anything, let me know, okay? So, guys, I will talk to you soon. Have a good day. I will see you later. Bye-bye.